All right, we should be live hopefully soon. I make no promises, though, if I fucked it up, which I probably did. We're just, we're going to hope. We're going to hold on on a wing and a prayer. This episode of The Lefty Show is going to start up, hopefully. I have no idea if it will. I hope it does. Uh, oh, there we are. There, okay, I refreshed, and of course, Google being the genius as it is, it doesn't save my audio preferences. So I, you heard a little bit of feedback. Okay, let's start the show. Three, two, one, now. It's Lefty. This is the Lefty Show. All right, welcome to the Lefty Show. We are here. It is episode seven. We are here. You're here too. Hey, hello. Um, this is the Lefty Show, episode seven. Going, uh, trying some new things. I know I realize that everybody's not everybody's video feed, feed fits their little thing. And also, Katie's kind of in the wrong spot. Um, there's a lot of things going on right now. We're having aspect ratio issues, and I just refuse to deal with it. XSplit's a piece of crap, and I just don't want to mess with it. So it's okay. I'm in like some kind of 4-3 aspect ratio variant. Uh, Katie is, I believe, close to 16-9, if not 16-9 already. Yes, and now Chiz has long red hair and is pretty instead of whatever he is now, which <laughs> is not that pretty. Yes, I am Lefty. This is the Lefty Show. Welcome. Her name is Katie. Now, I know it says under her, it says Dr. Chiz. She's not Dr. Chiz. She's Little Miss Katie, at Little Miss Katie, K-A-I-T-Y. Uh, Dr. Chiz is uh, switching time formats. We're going to get to that um, soon. Switching time and switching uh, uh, time slots with PKA. Um, so we are, <laughs> we are, we are scrambling, kind of. Uh, but this is our new home. Thursdays, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, right here, youtube.com slash leftyox. Hit that like button. Um, hit that subscribe button as well. Um, but also, yeah, so Chiz had other plans. Nothing wrong with that. He had planned around the show on Fridays, and last week I told him, I was like, dude, we got to switch it because PKA uh, is switching time slots, and he cannot make it tonight. So the lovely Katie is taking the big center stage. You're going to get to talk more too. Yeah, I will. Hopefully, right? You hope? I hope. Okay. Um, so she is going to be in that slot uh, normally. Um, next week, hopefully, we'll be, we will be completely good to go, uh, set up with Dr. Chiz in his normal spot, uh, me in a better aspect ratio, and Katie, uh, Katie working the boards and, and keeping us on time and going to breaks and stuff. You can interact with the show, hashtag Lefty Show on Twitter. You can also use the comments uh, of the live stream right now. But hashtag Lefty Show is how you get in touch with us right now. And, um, oh, my my video just changed. Hold on. Let's get this some bitch. Oh, uh, thank you, Skype. It's okay. It doesn't really matter all that much. I'm still here. Here, I can move a little bit back, so I'll be in the better shot. Um uh, hashtag Lefty Show on Twitter. Just add that at the beginning, in the middle, at the end of your tweets. Uh, that is how you interact with us. We will read that, and that is how you get read on the air quickly. You can follow me at Lefty643. You can follow her um, at Little Miss Katie, although, again, she is not at Dr. Trish. She is at Little Miss Katie, K A T Y, right there on Twitter. But we got a lot to talk about today. A lot, uh, lot been going on. First of all, of course, the new time slot. Here's the deal. Uh, I am a, a regular on PKA, and Woody uh, last week said, you know what, I think we're going to finally um, make the switch to uh, to Fridays. Now, this is something that Woody had been talking about for a long time. It actually predated uh, my first appearance on PKA. That was my first appearance. That was my first interaction, uh, or, or my first regular spot. On, uh, on PKA, and they had been talking about that for a while because, you know, they're, they have a lot of European viewers that don't get to watch the show because on Thursday nights it's like 1 a.m. when they start uh, in Europe and all this stuff. And so uh, they, they had been talking about making the switch for a while, and it just so happened that last week was that week. And so it's it wasn't a mean move by Woody at all. Um, 
What's uh, what's this tweet, Katie? Working on it? Yeah, people are saying they couldn't hear me very well, so I turned up the uh, sensitivity a little bit. Oh, they couldn't hear you. I know. I can. I can fix this. I. I see. I assess the situation because XSplit is a gigantic piece of shit, and it lowered your volume. You should be good now. Lower. You need to lower your vo microphone volume to where it was before. We should be good. Thank you. Okay. Um, we should be good now. I hope. I think. I don't. God, I hate fucking XSplit. <laughs> it sucks right. so much. Uh, but anyway, where was I? Oh yeah, it wasn't. Uh, it had nothing to do with Woody. Woody wasn't a bad guy about it. Um, and the reason I decided to move the show is because competing with PKA would be stupid. It would be just dumb. Uh, so, you know, Woody and Wings have helped me out tremendously, and um, I've gotten a lot of subscribers and viewers from them, and I don't think it would be... Number one, it wouldn't be smart to try to compete against PKA, just, just because. Uh, even if I was just... A, if I had no interaction with the show at all, it would be dumb to compete against that. Uh, but also, I don't think it would be fair to uh, try to make you guys decide and be like, all right, now you got to choose. You got to choose between Woody and PKA or me and the Lefty Show. I don't think that would be fair, so I decided that we're going to switch slots. Now, if PKA, for whatever reason, decides to switch back to Thursdays, guess what? We're going to go back to Fridays because, um, number one, I enjoy being a regular on PKA. This is in no particular order, by the way. Uh, number two, again, the aforementioned, I don't think it's fair to you guys to try to make you decide. And number three, just competing against PKA would be really, 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 really dumb. Katie, would you want to compete against no. PKA? Mm -mm. No, 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 no. Same. That's the thing. Um, so we are here in our time slot, in the in the time slot formerly um, inhabited by PKA. They've since vacated it. And we are here, and we are happy to be here. And so it wasn't, you know, I hear a lot about that. People ask me, like, oh, did Woody do it because he didn't want you doing the show? No. Woody, again, Woody had been uh, talking about it um, for a long time. And, um, you know, it just... Uh, it just it just happened. So, yeah. oh, oh, Hutch said he wanted to be on the show. You know that how gonna work that? Katie, you need to really figure out your Google issues. I'm uh, serious. You were all like, "Oh man, I got the direct connection to the modem and it stuff." It is, and it was running. Yeah, better. and it's still bad. Bad. bad, just like the show. Bad. I oh, mean, I please. guess it's perfect. It's poetic justice, really, <laughs> that your badness, your internet's badness with Google also coincides with the badness that is this show, right? <laughs> we got a lot to talk about um, this week. Um, I want to talk about Eat My Diction uh, did a video that <laughs> it's, it's sad that he had to do it. It sucks that, um, that he had to do it because, you know, dealing with uh, people that are, that are calling you money whores and stuff, um, it's just, it's awful. So we're going to be talking a little bit about that. What else do we have on the docket that we recorded, or that we wrote like 20 minutes before the show started? Um, The whole pay-per-view YouTube subscriptions. Ah, yes. That's going to be a... Helio. You know, I don't, a lot of people are freaking out about that for no reason. No reason at all. Because who's really going to do that? Who's going to try to be like, oh, you got to pay to watch Colton. But anyway... Uh, a lot of things to talk about. I want to talk about conspiracy theorists. All right. Because my dad. <laughs> should I just go. tell the story? I think I'll tell the story. Go for it. Oh, oh. also, it's going to be a shortened show, uh, probably. So probably 45 minutes to an hour instead of the usual two hours tonight because we don't have, uh, um, you know, dealing with tech stuff and, uh, and you know, we don't have Chiz to help carry. It's just Katie and I, and Katie is not very good at being an, uh, an entertaining personality. I'm just kidding. I'm not. I'm pretty quiet. People wish you would talk more on the show. That That's something that everybody talks about. Every single show, there are so many comments and tweets, hashtag lefty show, um, that people are like, why isn't Katie talking more? Why doesn't Katie talk more? Well, why don't you talk more? Normal, in the normal sense. Because now you have to. Now you okay. have to. But normally... Um, you don't really get a lot of words in edgewise when we're, when it's Chiz and I just rambling about stuff and George Carlin. Right. Uh, Hutch said I'm insulted. He didn't ask me. Hutch. Wow. Hey, <laughs> what? I hope he's not Shame really upset. You. It was a, 
I didn't think he was serious. Who would want to be on a show with me? I barely want to be Apparently on the show. Him. I didn't know. I didn't want to exactly. presume. I don't presume on friendships, which is why I worship the sun, I but I don't any- pray to the sun. <laughs> I don't presume on a friendship. It's not nice. <laughs> so I worship the sun, but I don't pray to it. <laughs> See, Chiz would just be dying right now. Chiz would die. He would be just laughing so hard at that uh, that George Carlin reference. So why don't you... See, again, I'm talking over you. Why don't you get a word in edgewise normally? Because I don't... I'm not much of an interrupter. I don't really like interrupting people. It's just how I am. I don't know. And you two talk a lot. Like, you don't give each other... You don't give me any space to talk at it's all. It's a so show! Like, mm-hmm. It's our job! We no, gotta like talk! Between you two... Oh, you have no clue. Plus, you two rag on me all the time, and I really don't. We don't blame. rag on you all yes, the time. Yes, you do. Oh, my goodness. What are you talking about? Yeah, you do. <laughs> what? No, no, When it comes no. between you two, yeah. It's like, pick on Katie when it, yep. No. It's all right. I'm it's always fine nice by me, to you. But that's how it is. I'm the one that's reeling chiz in, being like, leave her alone. Yeah, lately. Well, yeah. Because I tell you that. You tell me what? No, no. Wait, wait, wait. No, I make my own ma- d- damn decisions, okay? I'm a man. <laughs> All right? I don't take orders from you about whatever to do anything, okay? I'm just Hi, saying. I'm Captain. Damn yes, right. Sir. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. God, I hope Hutch isn't really upset with me. It was a- I honestly didn't think it would be like, I didn't want to, I don't want to, pre- I didn't want to presume. I'm very, very conscious about or self-conscious about presuming things of and from people. It's just a, it's a quirk I have. But no, Katie does a lot. Katie does a lot behind the scenes. She keeps us on time, going to breaks, coming back from breaks. Um, she tries to keep Chiz and I on topic. Yeah, sometimes Doesn't always work that way. Tangent time between you. Tangent time is a great thing. It's great, but when you two get going, it's just like, I just kind of have to do this. It's 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 all right, guys. It's radio gold, is what it is. <laughs> when Chiz and I get going, it's radio gold. Well, it's not really radio. I mean, technically, it is radio because somewhere in the chain, we are being brought. My video feed, my audio feed, your video feed, or your audio feed, or the feed from the stream is getting broadcast um, via radio via you know a high frequency mm-hmm. radio system. So, technically speaking. This is, at some point in the chain, a radio show. There you go. Yep. See? A Legit. Bad radio show. <laughs> bad. Populated by a bad. Why don't you? Well, I, oh, yeah, I do all the time. Come on. That's my thing. That's how I get compliments out of people. It's like, oh, I just suck at stuff. Fishing for compliments. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, I fish for compliments. <laughs> Who doesn't? I would know that. I'm a girl. I do that all the time. Yeah. Oh, man. My hair looks bad today. No. I do that all the time. I'm trying to be like, oh, I think, uh, you know, really like your hair. You look good on the makeup. You're like, oh, I didn't really do anything. It's like, well, what the fuck? What the <laughs> hell? What's the point then? If whenever a man tries to compliment a lady. <sighs> That's just how it is. Got to get used to it. That's how it is. <laughs> Why do women get away with that? Because we're women. That seems like bootstrap logic to me. <laughs> See, women fish for compliments all the time, but I do it and I'm an asshole. Uh, no one called you an asshole. What are well, you talking about? You know what I mean. You know what I mean. Well, double standards. It's everywhere. But you get you mad know. at me for double standards all the damn time. See, look at that. Now we got tweet- everybody tweeting, hashtag Lefty Show. It's a great show. See? Ha <laughs> It worked. There you go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. Yep. And, and, and all my stuff about Hutch earlier was just to try to get him to be like, no, dude, I really like you as a talent. Dude, I really respect you. I'm like, yeah. It's not fish for compliments like a bitch. Or a broad. Like a like broad. Boss. Like No, not like a boss. Like a broad. Like a broad? Like a broad. All right. Like a broad. Is that is that still bad to call women broads? No, I wouldn't say so. You know, if Hutch is really down to be on the show, we could do it next week. I think. Have him on the show, you mean? Yeah, because I don't. There's, there's. It's hard to get out. It would be hard to get him on the show now, just the way we have things set up. 
Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, I could now. Uh, yeah, so it, it would be hard to do it now, uh, now that the show's started. Um, but, this is when uh, Skype Premium would come in handy. Yeah. So, so yeah. But next week, it, next week would probably work, I think. See, this is how awesome the show is that we talk about production stuff during during the live cast. Like, oh, yeah, what are we going to do next week? What are we going to do about this? Oh, also, thank you. Uh, big thank you to um, – I just spit on my – I don't think I spit on my microphone. It's okay. Camera is low enough resolution. Nobody hopefully saw it. But um, <laughs> big thank you to the graphical guy, Dalton, who, uh, who did this background. Uh, he actually offered to update it. I don't know how or why. But uh, this one was uh, – of the two that we showcased over the last two weeks, this one um, got the most votes. A lot of people responded to it. They liked it. I, don't know, I thought it was pretty cool. But anyway, I'm sorry. Tangent time. Conspiracy okay. theories. I got to talk about this. I got to do it. Because I was, I was at the store. And, um, and I don't like walking around the store on my cell phone. I just kind of feel like a jag bag when I do that. You know, because other people are trying to shop. It's kind of personal. It's not as bad as, like, being on your, if you're on your cell phone at, like, Victoria's Secret, where people are, like, buying underwear. Because that's just weird. You know? Or like people, when people are doing personal things, you don't want to be on, you know, that idiot on your cell phone walking around. So I view food buying as kind of in that family. And so I, uh, I go outside, and uh, after I'm done shopping, I call my dad, and we start talking. And, uh, and he was like, and then he starts, he starts telling me the story. He's like, oh, I was looking at this, I was looking at this. And then, and then he said, and then I stumbled upon 9-11 conspiracy theories. And then he, was, and then he started... He was like, and, and I'm like, oh, no, I know, know where this is going. <laughs> I know where this is going. Mm -hmm. And I uh, started talking about how I was like, oh, man, it's re there's a lot of questions. There's a lot of stuff that just doesn't add up. And I'm just like, no, no. Be because, in the store. Well, because my skepticism and my rationality and my penchant for logic and reasoning comes – pretty much whole cloth from my father who's an attorney and uh and, and you know helped let me help audit some of his his courses that he taught uh, uh his law courses that he taught and a lot of that comes from him and so he is one of the last people that i would think would answer the phone and be like hey what do you think about all this what do you think about thermite cutting the cutting the support beams of the world trade center uh, so <laughs> I had to link him to a few different sites. And in doing so, I, I realized just how crazy some of these conspiracy people are. Because, I mean, I did the, the Sandy Hook thing. And the fallout from that was just, or, or not the fallout, but the, the negative responses that I got from the, the truthers were, you know, because it, Call of Duty, Call of Duty videos, if, if there's a negative response, somebody's just like, eh, hey, hey, you're ugly, or you suck at the game. It's like, okay, whatever, bro. But the, these truthers, you're a scumbag. You're getting paid by the government. How could you do And of it is when they, when, they, when they try to wrap all of that in skepticism. When they try to say, I'm just asking questions. I'm just doing this. You can't convince me that this isn't true. And I, uh, it's just like, wh where do you get this warped view of your life? Of whatever, where, where do you get this view where it's like, yeah, um, I'm skeptical by saying you can't convince me of this. You know? Yeah. That, that that doesn't sound like skepticism, does it? No, it just like even if you even if you remove the well, okay, we'll we'll change the subject matter, okay? Um, let's say we're talking. I don't know. Uh, let's make it complex math, okay? You you can't tell me that the integral of this of whatever function isn't this. Or no, because math is rather objective. You can't convince me that Uma Thurman 
hasn't aged well. Has she aged I honestly well? think it's just people being stubborn and stupid people. I don't really think there's much of an explanation for it. But it's just... Uh, it's so weird. And I know and, it's it's irksome, I know. And what me. they do, and what they do, what conspiracy theorists love to do is <laughs> no math on podcasts. <laughs> yes, math. Math is cool. Don't hate on math. Trust me. Math, take as much math as you can just because it's cool. It's, I don't use calculus in my everyday life. Well, my life is a little bit more but, weird than but, yours. But the calculus that I've learned is just cool and the math that i've learned i think is is cool so i think math is cool but the the thing conspiracy theorists try to do and when you're, this is what they this is how uh you know you can you can try to deal with them the thing that they a lot of them they try to do because my dad was like you know oh then how you you can't tell me that the that the towers didn't fall at free fall speed they didn't that they weren't that they weren't ballistic objects at that point subject to just uh, air resistance and gravity. And initially, my point was like, well, you know, you've kind of just you, you can't say you can't convince me of this. But also what they do is they assume nebulous points. They assume points that would normally be in contention, i.e. the debris and the building falling at free fall speed, which it didn't. But they assume that. They said, well, why did it fall at free fall speed? It's like, well, it, I, I can't answer that because it didn't. You're just assuming that, right? Like, Katie, when did you stop kicking puppies? Last Wednesday. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Bitch. The but, doctor said it was bad for me. I'm just the doctor said it was bad for you? Well, for them. For, for kicking the puppies? Yeah. The doctor or the vet said that? Well, I mean, I guess you don't need a, to be a, a veterinarian. Doctor. Is a veteran... Right, but they're a doctor? They're not a medical doctor. Uh, well, they couldn't be, a, like, a... A human, human. medical doctor. No, I think of couldn't. medical doctors as humans. Like, other than, you know, if you're opening up frogs and stuff and fixing pigs and whatever, you're just that's that's just like a hobby that you went to school for. You're not like a medical doctor. It's just like, oh, cool, let's open up this stuff and start rooting around, see if we can fix well, stuff. Veterinarians do the same thing, you know, that normal doctors do. It's just human doctors focus on only the human body, and veterinarians focus on hundreds of different species. So I think that would probably... Are you trying to say that veterinarians are better doctors than medical doctors? I'm just saying it's probably a little bit more difficult because they have more... Still think it's just kind of a hobby that you do, and you're you get okay. You get a degree that says, "Oh, remember when you were a kid and you like cutting stuff up?" Here's a piece of paper that says you can do it every day. Okay. <laughs> but that's the thing that conspiracy theorists thrive on: is they assume nebulous points and then go on from there. Because once you assume, in the case of 9/11 conspiracy theorists, that the buildings fell at free fall speed. Then, then that opens the door to to everything else. That opens the door to all these other discussions. Now, do they do it maliciously? Do they do it like, oh man, I know this isn't true, but I'm going to assume it is just so I can go on this crazy rant. On some, I just think in in general, no. I just think it's they need the world to have order, and the world, a world in which the government is responsible for 9/11. Is a little bit, little bit, at least, more ordered than a world in which religious zealots can take over a plane with f four fucking box cutters. How many people on on one of those planes? Mm, well, it was a. It was, was it wasn't a seven four seven five seven. Was it the triple seven? Was it a triple seven? No. DC nines or DC tens. I can't. 50 plus yeah. people. 50 oh, to yeah, 60 definitely. people. Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely, definitely. 50 to 60 people, probably 65% of whom are full grown humans. Not old people, people in their whatever kind of, uh, you know, in their, in their growth process. Um, 
they got four box cutters? Really? You're going to let four people take control of a plane with four box cutters? Box cutters. Have you ever seen a box cutter? Yeah, I yes. <laughs> are you going to open up an artery? How hard do you think it would be to open up an artery with one of those some bitches? With a box cutter? Yeah. It's a razor. It's a little shitty flimsy razor. No. No. They're what? sharp. It would be very easy. Very to easy to open up an artery with a box cutter. Yes. Are these ninjas? Are Al Qaeda ninjas they could. now? They're box cutters. You stab once, and it's like, ah, that hurts like a bitch, but then four other guys jump on them, and it's over. No, it's like anyway. slice to the throat, and you're done. No, not it's slice it. to the throat. Come I'm on. serious. No. They're dangerous. Okay. What, are you a veterinarian? No. <laughs> but my point is this. And even, even if that happens, how many people are you going to kill with a box cutter? It's like George Carlin. When you get on a plane, they actually give you a fucking knife. It's only a table knife, but you could kill a pilot with a table knife. Well, they don't yeah. anymore. They used to. That was the joke. They don't anymore. People might not know that. They actually did, used to give you metal utensils. and They actually, especially in first class, they would hand out table knives that were metal. And it's just kind of like, well, what? <laughs> but, it, I, you know, it's, it's a pussified culture. It's a pussified culture. It's a... A world in which a pussified culture can be herded by four guys with box cutters and fly their planes in the building is inherently less ordered than a world in which the, it's, the government is responsible for all of it. As sad as it is that, that all those people, innocent people, died. But, and I think that leads them to, to take, I, I don't want to say, erroneous leaps in logic. Because... If you watch some of the videos, right, because the, the, the way they get this free fall speed idea, um, we're, again, just talking about 9-11, but the whole idea for conspiracy theorists is they take a nebulous point. Uh, but, but we'll get back to that in a second. But the 9-11 guys, like the free fall thing, they say, oh, well, if you look at this one shot and you time it from when the building starts falling to when the building collapses, it's nine point some odd seconds. But it's like, well, the, that's not when the video, that's when the video cut away. And the guys that were holding the camera started running because here's a giant fucking skyscraper falling down on top of them. That's when they started running, but that's not how long it took to building the fall. Not at all. I mean, if you if you look at 9.22 seconds, it's the building. There was a whole lot of stuff. There's a whole lot of floors left to go. But they assume this nebulous point because it fits into their theory. Because once you assume that, once it's proven or assumed that. Um, you know, everything fell at free fall speed, then you can be like, well, why did it fall at free fall speed? It couldn't have fallen at free fall speed if it was just a top-down collapse of a building, which is true. They say, well, if it can't do that, it's got to be something. And then it goes on and on and on. It's like pulling, mm -hmm. like, you know, like a cheap T-shirt. Once you get one, the right thread cut or, or coming loose, the whole shirt starts to unravel. Same thing with the Sandy Hook guys. Why weren't there any ambulances? Who, wait. There weren't any ambulances in that shot. That doesn't mean that there weren't ambulances at the scene. That doesn't mean anything. They take these circumstantial points and spin them into facts. There's a quote in, uh, and I believe it's the first Sherlock Holmes movie, um, the, the first one that Jude Law and, what's his name? Katie, this is what you're, this is what you're here for. Um... And Sherlock Holmes, the first one? Yeah, who's the who's the other... What's his name? Oh, my... A brain fart. I hope this is not a tumor. He's not a tumor. Oh, crap. What's what's it's his name? Contagious. He's Iron Man. Robert Downey Jr. Robert Downey Jr. Cokehead. Former cokehead. Now he's not. Now he's just rich. Um, I believe it's the first one where he says, you are letting, opi you are letting opinions... I think he's talking to uh, Jude Law's character. He says you're letting opinions twist facts, uh, or you're letting opinions shape facts instead of facts shaping opinions. And that is what these people do. They let their bias influence their observation of, of facts, and then they go from there. It's not malicious. It's just bad logic, bad science, bad this or that. Sa you know, Sandy Hook, why weren't there this? Why weren't there that? What are other conspiracy theories, popular ones? 
JFK. Um, oh, why did why did right. people report multiple gunshots? Why did people report gunshots coming from over there? It's like, well, you're assuming that those reports of eyewitnesses are accurate. You're assuming that because somebody says that they think in the in the moment they heard shots coming from over there, that means sounds definite gunshot sounds came from that direction. That doesn't mean that. Are there are there any other ones? Big ones? Oh, the moon landing. Why have yeah. we never gone back? That's the biggest one. Or the whole flag ex- video oh, feed yeah. thing. Why is the flag waving? It's space. There's no air to move it. It's like, well, yeah. See, that's that's true. There is no air to move the flag. But there's also no air to offer resistance to motion. New- right. New- you know, Newton's laws and all that. So, but that's that's true. That's actually partial true science which i know i think they um if you think about it inertia is you know something's going to keep moving until something acts against it so the act of them actually putting flag up would give the flag motion Mm -hmm. which with no air as they said to be there to resist the Mm -hmm. flag would just kind of move it would still move because it would have had to have been moving to be put into that spot so I know a lot of people argued with that. Why haven't they gone back? If they never faked it, they should be able to go back. Why haven't they done it? It's because they can't. Well, wait, 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 wait a minute. We went a lot. And we got really lucky the 13th time. No. Wait. Was it 13? The bad one? Where they almost died? They had to sleep in the lunar excursion module? It's Apollo 13, right? Yeah. Durr. Tom Hanks did a movie about it. I'm, I'm confusing Apollo 13 with Apollo <laughs> 11. What did Apollo 11 do? Apollo 11 did something else. But anyway, we went a lot, and we got really lucky that a lot of people didn't die. And it's re- also really expensive. And we also found out about killing brown people. And apparently the powers that be in America are all about killing brown people instead of exploring space, which is really cool. Space is so cool, man. I would be scared shitless, though. Why do we not have warp drive yet? I demand warp <laughs> drive. I demand it. I We need warp drive. Why? I don't know. We need to go places with warp drive. It's cool. Or ion propulsion systems. <laughs> Instead of... Well, we can't... Liquid and solid fuel rockets can only do so much. Because to, to go longer distances, you need a lot of fuel. And at that that point, number one, you don't we don't we just don't have the materials to create that much fuel. And number two, how do we even get it up there in the first place? We need warp drive. Get on it. You get on it if you want it so bad. Well, you need to find a way to create enough energy at a focal point to warp space and time around that, because energy is equatable to mass, and mass warps space time. So you could do that. You need to find a way to create an incredible amount of energy or just, uh, I don't know, get neutrons, heavy particles, and concentrate them in an area and then warp the space around it so that you can propel yourself. I don't know. Figure it out. I'm not a scientist, though. Scientists are supposed to figure out warp drive. I'm just a guy. Just That's a all guy. I do. That's all. I, I'm not creating warp drive. <laughs> but somebody can. It's theoretically possible, I think. Maybe it isn't. I'm not up on quantum mechanics. You know, <laughs> stuff like that. So, yeah, my dad, getting back, tangent time. God, we need tangent time shirts. Um, really do. So I have to, I think I'm, I'm going to have to have a talk with my dad about, about you know, especially because he's the one that, that gave me all of these logical tools. And now here he is. It's like, well, you can't, can, you can't tell me this. And he said it on the phone, and I, I just uh, can't do that. I mean, I get it. Conspiracy theories are sexy. Not in that sense. Come on. Get your well, brain out of the gutter. It wasn't in the gutter. You're sexy, Katie. Are you happy? Everybody, at Little Miss Katie, K-A-I-T-Y, tell her she's beautiful, tell her she's hot, tell her... Ugh. Why do I have such a thing for redheads? Who has a thing for redheads? Anyone? Just that you see a redhead, you're like, holy crap. <laughs> Want. 
just want. But what, is it a natural red or is it this kind of red? Um, more red than orange. Like right. the orange redheads? Right. No, 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 no. I need, I need, some, I need some red in that, in that color palette. Yeah, I mean, your hair, your hair, yeah. You know, wait, you know what I... I was just... There you go, fishing for compliments. People. Fishing for compliments again. No. I get no respect, I tell you. <laughs> oh. There we go. I'm getting a lot of love on hashtag Lefty Show. That's how you get to interact with the show. Everybody's saying, um, conspiracy theories are sexy. I has thing for redheads. That perfectly encapsulates this show. Alan Hahn on Twitter. He says, conspiracy theories are sexy. I has thing for redheads. <laughs> it's better than I can typing. I can typing. <laughs> people. Um, speaking of people that should be smashed in the face repeatedly with a piece of heavy mining equipment. People that talk about money whores. Even my addiction had to contend with these douchebags. Uh, for those of you that don't know, uh, I don't know if he, I don't know if he's going to get butt hurt about me talking about this, but whatever. If <laughs> I guess it's a good day if Eat My Addiction's talking about me, right? But <laughs> um, he uh, changing networks and uh, for those of you that don't know, changing networks, it usually can be done seamlessly once you get past the fall draw of dealing with a network and their nebulous, poorly written contracts, uh, and you have to threaten to sue them. And they're like, okay, and they give up. Um, but there was there was a hang up, and and for a while he's lost his partnership, and because of in part because of that, um, he hasn't been uploading. And he said, you know what? It's not really incentivized as much as it was. I'm going to take some time for myself and do what I really want to do, whether that be game, whether that be go to parties, whether that be, you know, go hang out with friends, whatever it is Eat My Addiction does, right? Um, so he, he kind of curtailed his upload schedule. And a lot of people were like, oh, man, what happened? What's happened? Are you quitting YouTube? And he's like, no, 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 no. It's just, you know, I'm th this whole partnership thing. I don't have my partnership. And you know it's it's not really worth it at this time. So I'm doing stuff for me, taking a break and live streaming a lot. And a lot of people took that and jumped off into, oh my god, it's so horrible that you do this for money. You're such a do 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 do. I'm sure he, I'm sure somebody called him a money whore probably, or just a whore for the money. And da, 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 da. I I really hope this had gone away. Hutch does it too. If Hutch is watching, Hutch has to Hutch has to apologize all over himself every time he mentions his Planet Side Two link. His link in the description of his videos where, you know, you can go download Planetside 2 and he gets, I don't know how it works out, but I don't know how it works between them, but apparently he gets something from that. And he feels, and it's not, it's not, rein, it's not, not reinforced that he has to do that because people will still go crazy on you if they think that you do this just for the money. Okay, you have a job. Right. Do you really like jerking off dogs that much? <laughs> or no. I mean washing dogs no or do you, like do you have like a passion for it a passion I would say no you want to be a doctor in washing of dogs you can be a veterinarian that oh, way yeah. do I get an elephant I think so yes Yes. well I mean again you get your undergrad what do you get for your undergrad you get some kind of animal not an elephant no it was what was it you get a hippo if you get a master's. Yeah, hippo is graduate alligator degree. Alligator for bachelor's. Alligator for bachelor's. Okay. So Undergrad degree is alligator. Yeah. Graduate degree, you get a, a hippo. And then if you get your your doctorate, you get elephant. You get a, you get a goddamn elephant. But yep. so so you don't you don't actually like washing dogs. You you don't have a passion for it. It's not right. your life's passion. Then why right. do you go to work? For money. Money whore! Oh. You're a whore for the money! <laughs> Urgh. Urgh. Why is it so bad to even entertain the idea that people enjoy making money from YouTube? Does anybody else enjoy what they do? Do you think the guy that shovels shit for a living really likes shoveling shit? He does it because he gets paid. Do you think the garbage man really likes reeking of garbage? All the time. It's because he gets paid. And they get paid a lot, too. Yeah, they get paid. Good they money. get good money for that. But oh, the garbage men are money whores. Why is it so bad that people get money from this? I, I mean, 
the whole th- the, the the dubious points that people try to make is like, oh well, if you get paid for it, you're not going to care as much, and no, 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 your your content's going to suffer, and it's like, well, no, that's not, no, that's not true. I don't think that's ever happened in the history of you know. Oh, I got partnership now, my videos suck. Also, the, sometimes somebody just sucks. That has nothing to do with money, but. The YouTube partnership program, people making money from videos, making money from live streams, from podcasts, is what provides you guys with seemingly unlimited on-demand entertainment whenever you want. Whenever you want. HBO, Cinemax, Showtime all have on-demand features, but you got to pay extra for it. Why? Because there's infrastructure that goes into that. You've got to cost money to store everything somewhere and have it accessible and you know, bandwidth and servers and all that. So it costs a little extra to do it. YouTube, you get it for free. And you get anybody you want. And you don't have to pay a dime. You don't have to pay a dime to watch content. To watch any content you want. Well, you might have to if YouTube. It's another topic. But I just I don't understand why people are so upset that YouTubers treat YouTube as a job. Not all of them do, and to each their own, but why is it inherently a bad thing? Since when did it inherently become a bad thing that you make money from YouTube? Um, I think sometimes viewers get somewhat personally... Not both ways, of course, but viewers get personally involved with the people that they are subscribed to. They feel like they're their friend or, you they're know, not. you know, they're right, not. right. In, in most but cases. That's how they that's how they think. Mm-hmm. And sometimes when um, a person that they're subscribed to, you know, grows in views and they get partnered and all that stuff, they're usually person's motivation, the the channel's motivation changes sometimes and people get upset, kind of like an old friend, you know, changing or whatnot. I, I think mm-hmm. that might be kind of what it is, is people just getting butt hurt because they're changing and growing and going more from personally focusing on viewers mm-hmm. and more focusing on content and networking between YouTubers and stuff like that for money. And I think that could probably be it, people getting personally mm-hmm. involved into a channel and then getting butt hurt over it. I just I, I still don't see an issue with um with this being a job for people. And saying that, you know, you do this for the money that what does that even mean? Like, yeah. I'm not ashamed of it. I'm Another erroneous assumption that people like to make is that people only do it for the money. Like, that's the only thing. Were it not for the money from YouTube, they would be off doing something else. That's just not the case. I don't think that's the case for anybody in YouTube. Like, were they making less money than they are right now? They wouldn't be, they, they wouldn't be doing it or they wouldn't be doing it. But it's just to, to unilaterally say, no, oh, don't do it. Because you're, you know, you you're a money whore and you're just doing it for the money. It's like, well, does that matter to anybody? Even if it was true that people, some people only uploaded videos and did made partnered channels for money, does does that matter? Does it in influence your viewing at all? Does it change the videos that you watch and that you enjoy? Assume that I don't, I don't know. Name a name a big t- YouTuber, whoever comes out tomorrow and says all this time all of this time from my rise from obscurity to where I'm at now in YouTube all the time that whole time I'd been doing it solely for the money were it not for the YouTube partnership program I would have never uploaded a video to YouTube assume somebody some huge YouTuber says that does that in any way change the videos he's uploaded to that point does that in any way change your enjoyment of the videos that he that he or she has uploaded to that point has it seems to me that you're just a you're just a a, a, a panty waste looking to get upset about stuff if you say yes like yeah it changes it then you're just looking to be upset about things 
You're just one of those people. And a lot of people are saying Hutch wants to join in. Um, Hutch, I apologize if uh, if you're watching. Um, and maybe some people want to tell them. The, the way we have it set up now, what we're doing for this show, which isn't how we do it normally, um, it would be next to impossible um, to, to get you on. I apologize. It's just it was a last-minute thing. Um, it, it was just you know tech issues trying to sort them out and make sure the show would run smoothly because Chiz isn't here um, and Katie you know has to be more in the spotlight so it wouldn't uh, it, it it wouldn't work at the at this juncture next week however and pretty much every other week after that yes but uh, but right now it's just um, it's a it's not impossible it's just I hate dealing with tech issues. I hate it, and it would be just a. I mean, I love Hutch, and I and I don't mean to to diminish the fact that he would enjoy being a spot on having a spot on the show. Um, it's just a it's a pain in the pain in the butt uh, to do all this stuff right now. So, my apologies. I'm a I'm bad, but I I know I'm bad, and I always say I'm bad. So you can't be <laughs> mad at me for being bad. Plus, I think we're gonna end the show in a little bit, in about thirteen minutes. Can we? If I told who's your favorite YouTuber, Katie? My favorite YouTuber? Besides me. Um, hmm. By the way, your favorite YouTuber is me, right? Right, I was going to say you. Okay. Uh, I would probably have to say probably Woody. Woody? Yeah. Oh, man, I don't want to. I got to tread carefully here because he gets a lot of this crap a lot. But Woody's a perfect example because he gets a lot of that crap too. Do you only do this with their money? And it's like, well. Me getting money from this and treating it as a job is what allows me to create so much content for you. It allows with so many other YouTubers to to create content for them. Uh, it just it just seems to me that people are getting really, really upset for no reason about people making money from YouTube. They're just like, Oh my god, how are you how could you make money from YouTube? And I'm just like, no. People making money from YouTube is okay. And yes, I have a toy gun in my hand. You know what I like about this toy gun? Orange ring of death. Well, it makes my bullets more, more powerful. But also, it sounds so cool. I got to record that and make it like a sound bite. Everybody like the stream or the microphone gets it. I'm not playing. I'm not playing. Yeah, yeah, you. Guys, he's not getting around. Mm-mm. <laughs> Mm-mm. Oh, shit. Yeah, I will hold my, my damn microphone hostage. What are you going to do about it? So you know what Katie doesn't like when I do this? No, don't. Stop. Okay. No, bad. You got to fire no. it off and do the RoboCop thing. Oh, you're probably too young. for. Have you ever seen RoboCop? I have not. You have not seen RoboCop? Mm -hmm. oh, great movie. See, look at everybody liking the video now. Damn right. <laughs> they like this microphone. They're like, ooh, got to oh, save the microphone. I should do that more often. I'm going to hold, hold more things hostage. What else can I hold hostage? The antacid is next. Oh, geez. If you guys don't favorite, maximum strength cherry flavor. Oh. It's all they had. It's all they had. Cherry. I was like, I would have taken vanilla or um, anything else <laughs> instead of cherry, but they only had cherry. And also my my post workout stuff. Katie tried to make me drink Ensure, and then can we tell this story? Tell the story. You you me? tried to get me yeah Oops. tell start it off kick it off tell them what you tried to get me to do. Okay, I well, since you Katie fashions herself like kind of like a healthcare professional or something. No 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 no. I just know that eating like one time a day, one time a day is not good, especially when you work out regularly. You're not supposed to do that. You're supposed. to... It doesn't go nope. right here over my shoulder. A nice big monster brand. <laughs> All cost you is twenty five hundred bucks a month. Only. Monster. 
Okay, sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, crap, I lost my train of thought. Not that there was one to really begin with. But, um, okay, so you were only eating like one time a day, and it was making me mad because I'm like, that's unhealthy. That's not good. If you want to be healthy and get fit, I just want to lose shouldn't... fat. That's it. Yeah, but you have to do it the healthy way. You can't just starve yourself. You I can't wasn't do starving that. myself. Well, okay, one meal a day. Starving yourself. Not really. Calories yeah. in versus calories out. That's it. It's a math problem. That's it. I was just limiting my calories in, my caloric intake. Right. Is that such a bad thing? That's what. They, that's what everybody. Okay. Anyway. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. Okay. So you, I wasn't doing so it right. So I wanted you to start taking some sort of nutritional drink to try and make up for the nutrients that you weren't getting for not eating regularly. So I wanted you to drink Ensure, which I don't mean the crap that old people drink to like regulate their stuff. I mean the things that <laughs> Ensure has different mm -hmm. you know varieties of things that they have in the brand and they have a nutrition daily nutritional drink that anyone can use and I used to use it for work because I wouldn't have time to eat. But here's the thing, when I went this <laughs> <laughs> I went to the store because I bit because she wouldn't shut up about it. I brought it up twice in like the span of twenty minutes. I was like, "Fine, no. fine, fine." She wouldn't let me get. Can you? Okay, I'm OCD. Can you fix your hair, please? It's bo it's bothering me a little bit. Yep. Thank you. I'm okay. sorry. It's. Oh, there. Thank you. Okay. there we go. I got it. I'm weird. Another OCD thing. Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah, I, add that it, to the list. It bothers me. Once it's seen, it can't be unseen. And I was just, <laughs> I don't mean to be mean. I'm sorry, Katie. You know, oh, I have a special place in my cold, dark heart for you. But it was ugh, bothering me. Anyway, so I go to the store, right, to buy this stuff. And I'm, you know, I make it to the last stop because it's in the Osco section. And Os Osco's fucking all the way over there. So, I'm, you know, I get my monster and, and whatever else. And um, my, my soup. I got soup. You always get soup. Soup is so good. Tomato soup. Oh my god, so amazing. Anyway, so I walk over to Osco's section, to the nutritional section. Also, you know, because I, I, I don't go to Osco normally, so I don't know the aisle. So I'm like looking, I'm like, what? It's got, you know, there's all this, there's that, there's that. And I, so I find the nutritional section and I find the insure. And it's kind of later at night, you know, past the evening rush, the rush hour, you know, where everybody comes coming home buying, uh, buying groceries on the way home. And so Osco is pretty, it, it's, empty pretty much so i figure out i don't see anybody over the over the aisle when i'm walking up so i i turn in i turn in out of the aisle and i see the insurer and as i look up who is standing at the largest collection of insure bottles <laughs> or insure bottles but an old lady an old old lady and i all right, you know what? I know this is going to sound ageist. I didn't want to buy the same things as like a 70-plus-year-old old lady, okay? I didn't. I didn't want to go like stand next to her and be like, oh, what kind of brand insurer are you getting? Because I'm going to get this. and Let's hope we don't crap our pants together. <laughs> I didn't want to. I didn't want to feel old because I'm not old necessarily. I, don't, I didn't want to. I thought I would be like, eh. So I got I, – I bought some futuristic-looking – EAS, company that Brady Quinn was pimping <laughs> right after he got out of college. Brady Quinn. Awful quarterback. But, yeah, so I didn't want to feel like an old man <laughs> buying insure. Because initially when you even said, like, you should buy insure, I'm like, what? No. I'm not 75. I don't have to keep regular. I'm good in that area. My fiber intake is... Is top notch. <laughs> All right, so we're going to end the show probably in about five minutes. Again, apologies <clears throat> to Hutch, um, technical issues, and the way we set up this special show because Chiz isn't here, and um, and Katie's internet hates Google for whatever reason. No, I think no. I may have a, I think I may have a lead as to why that happens. We'll talk about it after the show. Uh, my apologies to Hutch. Um, we'll try to uh, I'll converse with him and see if he wants to come on. Uh, any other time, you most assuredly be welcome. Um, 
I'm sure we're Chiz and I could talk about this next week, and I'm sure we probably will after the Super Bowl. Um, but as we close out the show, can Ray Lewis please stop thumping his Bible so loudly? Just come on. I respect and I will indeed defend vehemently, vehemently his right to believe whatever he wants, to believe in believe in God or the Christian God or whatever. I, I respect and will defend his right to do that. I don't need to hear about it all the time. I don't need to hear, especially when you're using it as a shield to deflect harsh questions and criticisms away from you, especially when you, when you position yourself such that if anyone was to continue and pester you to get an answer about your alleged, uh, performance-enhancing drug use or your alleged double fucking homicide that you committed in the year 2000, if, if anyone were to continue along that line of questioning, they would not only be attacking you, but attacking God and religion and faith. And I see that as a just a dirtbag, scumbaggy move, and just stop it. I don't need you don't need to respond to oh well what about this deer antler allegation that you took performance enhancing drugs and HGH you said well that's that's a trick of the devil and you know oh don't ask me about the murder because this is God's time stop trying to take away God's time don't do that keep sermonizing and proselytizing I'm not okay with I'm okay with you believing whatever you want I'm okay with you wearing your cross getting cross tattoos pointing to the sky thanking God in a, in a post-game press conference. Fine. I don't really like it, but okay. But when you start just doing all of that, it's just, it's, it's insufferable. It's just insufferable. It's not attacking religion. It's just, number one, you don't need to be that in everybody's face about your religion. And number two, um, you don't need to hide behind it. Stop hiding behind your religion. Dusty Baker did the same exact thing with his kid in Chicago. I think he might still do it. His son, uh, I think his son is Dustin. Son Dustin Baker. Son of Dusty Baker. He would literally have his child on when the Cubs would suck. He was the manager of the Cubs here in Chicago for a few years. When the Cubs would suck and they were just bad and getting hammered and hammered and he was making stupid moves, stupid managerial moves, stupid, stupid, stupid. When the press would get on him, all of a sudden here his his... His toddler age son, his five-year-old, six-year-old, seven-year-old son would appear on his lap at the press conference. And then if you, and a couple times, somebody asked him a hard question. He was like, dude, my son's here. Why do you got to do, why you got to be all, in, do, same, same exact thing. So it's not just a religion thing. Just don't, either, either just say, I'm not answering any questions about the double, the double homicide I probably committed, or I'm not going to answer PED allegations, but don't hide behind your religion. Don't make people... Don't put people in that position where, especially reporters, where to do their job, they have to attack your religion and look like assholes. It's just, it's not fair, and it's a, it's a scumbaggy, dirtbaggy move. And I think indicative of what Ray Lewis actually is, a scumbag and a dirtbag. But that's a topic for a different time. <laughs> Katie? Yes? Before we go, mm -hmm. please tell everybody I'm not mean to you. You're not. That's just. I'm not, right? No, you're not. Promise? Most of the time. What? <laughs> when am I ever mean? I, I was just kidding. You're not mean. You're not. All right. Damn right. People Otherwise, just later you'd be getting sometimes. crack upside the head. <laughs> it's. Me, I don't. Katie knows that I'm joking. Not. I don't mean to be mean to Katie. She's a very beautiful young lady who uh, who does a lot for the show, and we thank her very much for it. And Chiz better be nice to her. I'm going to punch him in the face. He's never nice to me. I know, but that's a new rule. New rule okay. starting now on the show. Chiz is nice to you, or he's getting punched in the face. Deal? All right. Because I don't know what Chiz... I could probably beat the crap out of Chiz if I wanted to. He's younger than me, but I'm... Probably Not bigger, and that. bigger and stronger, and I don't smoke anymore. <laughs> you used to. No. I dipped, and I stopped that. Been di dip free for almost a. I want to say almost a year. No. 
Hmm. Do you know February, March, April? I think May of last year is when I stopped. So we're coming up on a year here. Pretty proud of that. Should we throw a party for you? I well, I don't know. I mean, I think what is the what's the percentage? Like ninety five percent of people trying to quit an addictive substance relapse within the first year or something like that. So to be to be dip free for a year. I mean, I, I I was I was addicted to the point where I had withdrawal symptoms and you know I was uh, I would get headaches when I didn't have any so I don't know um, but yeah we are gonna end the show there thank you everybody for uh, bearing with us through some tech issues and uh, in this shortened abbreviated uh, lefty show thank you to Hutch for showing an interest and being an awesome guy mm-hmm. um, Katie by the way uh, uh, quick memo to end the show you may now be replaced by Hutch just saying. oh boy just saying. I still love you, but Hutch, I love Hutch more. Um, I understand. <laughs> I would, too. <laughs> wow. Okay, what? So you're trying to say you'd bang Hutch? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Good job, babe. <laughs> All right. Uh, we're going to end the show there. Thank you, guys. Uh, be sure to leave a like on the stream. Uh, hit the subscribe button if this is your first time here. Um, there's more to come. It gets better. I, pr- I hope it gets better. It is a little bit better. Increments. Better and better and better. But we're we're bad now. But in six months, a year, next week will be slightly less bad. No, because Chiz will be here. We'll be worse. Oh, yeah. Okay. So <laughs> I'm just so kidding. Slightly. Oh crap! Oh crap! <laughs> I love Chiz. Chiz is a great part of the show. Katie doesn't like him, but that's fine. I like Chiz to an extent. Bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, guys, that's our time. we got to get out of here. Thank you for joining. We hope you enjoyed. Be sure to drop a like on this stream and video later on. Be sure to drop a like on this uh, video if you did enjoy. Remember, hit the subscribe button. More Lefty Show along the way. Thank you all for joining. We hope you enjoyed. We are out.